You type it every day to send an email. It's on every keyboard on the planet. But what if I tell you that the at symbol has its own secret dossier? The story that begins not in Silicon Valley, but in the dark scriptoriums of medieval monasteries, full of dust and secrets. It's not just an icon. This is a digital museum piece that accidentally got into the future. Today, we will solve his real case. Get ready to find out how one curl survived the centuries to become the key to the global network. Imagine a stone cell, 15th century. A monk hunched over a sheet of expensive parchment, writing letters in ink. His task is to rewrite an ancient treatise, and every penny counts, literally. To save space and time, the scribes used clever abbreviations. The Latin preposition ad, which means on, at, in. They began to write as one rapid ligature, combining A with an elegant tail D. This ponytail was the very curl. It wasn't art for art's sake. It was accounting. Imagine a commercial port in Venice or London. Merchants keep records. 10 items for the price of two coins. The phrase at the price in English is at the price of. And in order not to write the word at every time, they use this very symbol. It has become a shorthand sign of commerce, meaning by. He has lived in the books of accounts for centuries, a quiet and inconspicuous servant of business. And now there is a sharp jump in 1971. The world is on the verge of a digital revolution. Engineer Ray Tomlinson sits at the terminal of the ARPANET network, the ancestor of the modern internet. He faces a seemingly simple task, how to separate the username from the computer name in an email address. We needed a symbol that was guaranteed not to be found in any name or title. His gaze slides over the keyboard of the Model 33 teletype, and he notices, at. It was a moment of epiphany. The symbol, which for centuries meant at, for the price, perfectly fit into the new logic. User at host computer. User on such and such computer. The genius of Tomlinson's choice was its simplicity and semantic precision. At was not invented. It was repurposed, like an old tool that found a new use in a digital workshop. The first email with this symbol in the address was sent from one computer to another, which was literally in the same office. No one suspected then that this test would mark the beginning of an era. But how did At get onto the keyboard of a 1960s teletype? His journey there is another link in the chain of accidents. Developers of early computers and telecommunication systems often borrowed symbols from business machines, such as accounting typewriters. On those machines, at was used precisely in its old commercial meanings. Thus, the symbol made its way into the digital age almost by smuggling, like an invisible passenger from the past. He was waiting in the wings, preserving his essence but changing the context. And what about Russia? Here the symbol has a second popular life and a mysterious nickname, dog. Why dog? There is no single answer, and this gives rise to the most interesting hypotheses. The most popular version is visual. Take a closer look at the sign. The curl D can indeed resemble a curled up animal and the letter A, its head. It was a figment of the imagination of the first users who tried to describe an unfamiliar symbol in their native language. Another version, almost legendary, takes us into the world of the first computer games. In the text-based adventure game, Colossal Cave Adventure, which was popular among programmers, the at symbol stood for the player himself. And in one of the later, graphic versions, the main character could be accompanied by a pet dog. Thus, on the screen, Act could be associated with the character 
and his faithful companion. This version, although it does not have absolute confirmation, perfectly illustrates the spirit of computer folklore. But the history of the dog in the USSR also has technological implications. The sign was a rare guest on Soviet typewriters. It appeared massively only with the advent of personal computers, often in the form of imported software. For many, he was a novelty, and it was necessary to call him something. Dog is a simple, imaginative, memorable word that fits perfectly on the tongue. It reflected not so much the history of the symbol as the cultural shock of encountering new technology. This cultural shock has given rise to an amazing variety of nicknames around the world. In Poland, at is a little monkey. In Israel, it is a strudel. And in Hungary, it is a worm. Each name is a small window into the national consciousness, a reflection of what exactly this mysterious icon looked like to people who saw it for the first time. This proves that technology has not only a technical, but also a deeply human linguistic history. We don't just use tools, we give them names, put a piece of our perception into them. But let's dig deeper. What really happened when at became the heart of email? A fundamental transformation of space has taken place. In commercial records, the symbol indicated a specific price at a specific point, here and now. In an email address, it has become a separator between personal and public, between a person and a machine. He indicated the location not of the product, but of the digital identity. This is a subtle but powerful shift. From a symbol of value, at has become a symbol of identity in the online space. This revival of an old symbol is not a unique case. The history of technology is full of such archeological finds. The escape key on your keyboard, for example, was originally a way to switch between different teletype modes. But the difference with at is that it brought with it not only a function, but also a hidden semantic legacy. He carried the memory of the centuries old practice of human communication, accounting and arrangements. It is the ghost of a paper document that has settled in the digital world. The irony of fate is that in the era of instant messengers and social networks, email, and with it the at symbol, are once again becoming something formal, almost archaic, for many young people. This is a tool for official correspondence, for registration on websites. But his role does not decrease from this, but, on the contrary, becomes more fundamental. At is your digital passport, the key to bank accounts, cloud storage, and your professional reputation. From a tool of everyday communication, it has evolved into a guardian of your digital self. This evolution from a monastic ligature to a digital guardian is a perfect example of how technologies are layered on top of each other. We rarely invent something from scratch. More often than not, we take old, time-tested ideas and adapt them to new realities. At is a living artifact that demonstrates the continuity of human thought. He binds the epochs with a thin but strong thread. When you put this symbol in your address today, you are unknowingly reproducing the gesture of a medieval scribe who saved space. But what would have happened if Tomlinson hadn't chosen at? History could have gone the other way. Maybe we would use the grid hash or the dollar sign and these symbols would also have their own interesting story. However, it was Tomlinson's choice that gave email its special charm. At is an intuitive symbol, devoid of aggression, and does not carry an obvious commercial or technical burden, like a dollar or a grid. He was a neutral mediator, which may have contributed to his global acceptance. Today, at has gone far beyond email. He has become a symbol of the internet itself. 
mentions on social networks. When you write at username, you are directly referring to a person in a digital crowd. It's a gentle but effective way to establish a connection. This is his new social function. It is transformed from a sign indicating the location of an object to a sign indicating attention directed at a person. This is another step in its semantic evolution. So the story of at is not just a fun fact from the history of technology. This is a deep metaphor for how we explore the digital space. We instinctively look for orientation points and familiar images in it. We transfer familiar models to the virtual world. Addresses, mentions, pointers. At has become one of the first and most successful such bridges between the analog past and the digital future. He helped make the incomprehensible cyberspace more habitable, more human. So the next time your finger reaches for the key with this sign, stop for a second. Remember the monk in the candlelight, carefully tracing the ligature on the parchment. Remember the merchant bent over the ledger, Think of an engineer who had a brilliant epiphany in the laboratory. You don't just type a character. You are setting in motion a centuries-old history of human communication, commerce, and technological breakthroughs. This curl is a silent witness to the change of epochs. The history of AT is not a story of loud discoveries, but of quiet adaptations. This is a reminder that sometimes the most important things are hidden not in loud slogans, but in small details that we have stopped noticing. He teaches us to look at the familiar from a new angle and see the depth in the most mundane things. After all, it is precisely such details that truly form the fabric of our reality. It has gone from dusty archives to the global web becoming the universal key to communication. And his story doesn't end there. Who knows what new function it will acquire in the future, in metaverses or in interfaces that we cannot yet imagine. One thing is for sure, this ancient symbol will still have its say. If you are interested in finding out the origin of the familiar things that surround us, subscribe to the Origin Stories channel. Thank you for being with us.